we are today on the second day of our seminar. That means you learned yesterday a lot of things about uh, rehabilitation, about habitats and biotopes. And once again today you have the chance to see all these things we saw yesterday in theory. And the target is to learn a little bit more in this model group about each main habitats I described yesterday. To remember yourself, it was the aquatic areas, the amphibious habitats and the terrestrial habitats. How will it work? We start walking here together. Together means really in one group because once again we are in a quarry, in a mining site. Health and safety first. This, these underwater plants create a structure. A lake without such a structure of plants inside is less good for biodiversity than with these water plants. If somebody can catch the green beetle, that would be nice. <laughs> no, no, you can catch it for some minutes. And what you see is that's very interesting. You know, we stay here, we stay here, stay here for, for five or ten minutes, and even if you don't know the species, you see you have three different beetles inside yep. regarding it's typically for floodplain areas. And we are now here in an area where we create shallow ponds, shallow water bodies for dragonfly, for amphibs, for the water beetles. And uh, you can see that very well, that is one aspect. And the other thing is you will see later on, we will see the, the, the forest, the natural succession forest areas where we create these areas for natural succession. The idea in uh, 20 years ago was to really to, to, to heal the wound, to, to fill the, the quarries and to make everything green, yeah, very quick. And nowadays, the, the philosophy changed completely. What we want is we would let it open as long as possible to, to allow natural succession and we don't want to, to forestate everything. And uh, because you see, this is, this is really biodiversity. Yeah? It's very easy. You always, you always make this like that. The next step is, the best thing is you put always your head in like that. The problem is if you have bees collected. <laughs> a wonderful larvae of a grasshopper. Uh, is it still a larvae? It's still a larvae. You, you see that they ha he has no wings. Mm. Okay. So he has not developed wings. Mm -hmm. I think what you feel today very well, that these terrestrial areas... Oh! Oh, oh my first fang, genau. It's like having a deer, shot the deer. <laughs> Well, for me, uh, first it was a great experience to uh, see what our colleagues in the field of bio biodiversity are doing for the company, especially the training outside here in the quarry of uh, Lixe was uh, fantastic so that we could see what kind of work is it and I think we better understand now uh, what is our company focusing on when we are talking about biodiversity. In Australia, um, biodiversity to me um, means um, it will help us with our rehabilitation planning. An international experience is an added value, if you will, and also with the guidelines that we're working with as far as biodiversity promotion is concerned. Um, you get to culturize the ideas and the guidelines better when you've come to listen to the experiences from various countries. So for me, the added value is to also get to know the perspectives from all the participating countries, and so you have a good benchmarking to what to do locally in your own countries. There was a need to have such a training because we will bring, I will bring <laughs> that new knowledge in my country, what is uh, in reality biodiversity, how can we uh, do this work uh, in practice. And I think I also uh, have seen that the efforts uh, our colleagues are doing together with the students in the quarries, that they really, really do a lot for that. It helps us seeing behind okay what happens when you walk uh, you see and you, you you stay quiet you see the little insects you see the butterflies you see the the vegetation um, so that was quite important and it will help us as communicator to better explain why biodiversity uh, is so important. We will be able to give these explanations to the press, uh, the media, the journalists and the other stakeholders who uh, are asking us uh, for information. Having been there on, on the spot uh, with two days, having the whole framework will definitely help us explain better why biodiversity uh, is so important in our strategy. We need 
this knowledge, we have to talk about biodiversity protection in the framework of rehabilitation. So it, there's an economical part and something which is more soft skill or whatever you call that. But it's important, I mean, um, it's uh, equal in which religion you are, uh, nature is always something which should be protected. Huh? It's, uh, so we, I think we all have the feeling, we feel much better if we do something positive. When I talk with quarry workers, they think all, the whole day outside working with heavy machines, Nobody likes only to destroy something. Many, many of them are very happy when they, when they have the possibility to create also something. I think that's in our nature, that we, 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 we don't like only to destroy things. We like also to, to see that we can create something. And th this was my experience with quarry workers. Explain them that you can easily help some tots, some frogs, by doing that and that. And you will see, they will really, they like to do it. It is more difficult for these people being always in offices, completely yeah, far away from, 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 uh, from nature. And there, um, it's perhaps sometimes more difficult. What I do, and I think what we all should do, uh, we should invite them to come to the mining sites, show them what is outside. It's wonderful to have these, these roll-ups, it's wonderful to have flyers, it's wonderful to have the internet page, but the people have to make their own experiences outside. It's internally and externally. In, externally, I think with the Quarry Life Award, now we can show students that we can give them that experience. And I get a lot of stories from you saying, hey, they said, oh, we are not interested. We can't find nothing on the mining sites. And now they change their mind. Uh, but internally, it's the same. Try to convince your general manager, your bosses to come with you, go outside with an ecologist perhaps, and show them what is in the beauty in the mining site.